Hey guys, and welcome to, I guess, my Martin build video. I'm not really that great with intros, so I'm sorry if, like, it's a little abrupt, but, um, I just wanted to, I guess, talk about my Martin build because I, some, I know some people don't really know what to run on him necessarily, or they're kind of running typical things, and uh, I don't know if, like, my build is too different from that, but as a rank 839 martin as you can see right in the corner um i feel like maybe sharing it could help some people out i know that the game's pretty you know dead at the moment and it is what it is but i don't know i know there's still a small community and i just want to help out i guess the people that are left playing it so let's get started um we'll start with skills obviously because we'll just go from left to right but Obviously, the best thing to run for, um, what's it called? My Flash Baton, for me, I never really changed this, it's Shockwave. <clears throat> um, blinds cameras and destroys traps within range. That's really useful, and it's obviously better than, you know, the last two, because the last two don't really do much. I mean, Rapid Cooldown is really great in itself, and you can get it back as fast as possible. But, um, Shockwave comes with the most benefits. So, and as long as you're running some sort of mixtape or, and you're killing zombies and shooting cameras, it should come back at a decent time. But we'll get into the equipment later on. <laughs> now, makeshift mine. My favorite mine, which some people, at least from what, from what I've learned recently, <laughs> apparently don't like shock. But as a rank 100 Martin, um, I played a lot of Martin, and I don't want to like sit here and like act like I know everything about him, even though I probably do because I've been playing him since launch. But in my opinion, Shock is the best one out of the three. Because Shock comes in handy whenever um, <clears throat> there's creature builds, Horde and stuff like that. Um, it really helps with the crowd control. If you place a mine down correctly, a fun fact, the zombie will run into it. It's not like zombies go around it. Zombies are naturally attracted to mines. So if one zombie steps in the mine, and there's more zombies around it, it'll start a chain reaction to all zombies. Like, it, there's not a limit. It's like, it's not like it'll only stun like, oh, like four zombies and the rest are fine. It'll stun a whole group. So like, if there's like 10 zombies in a row, let's say, one zombie steps in it and he's close to other zombies, the whole thing will get stunned. It's really good against like Daniels too and stuff like that, especially if you know how to place your mind down. Cause you can, um, it almost works as a Kashima, you know? And uh, I know that it has, you know, 45 second cooldown, but we'll get into equipment later. But it's still really useful for certain situations like that. Flame. I've never really ran Flame at all, except whenever the game first came out. And it's decent in its own way. They're all decent in their own ways, but Flame doesn't really come in handy for me, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> I know people say you can stop bioweapons in its tracks and you can save your friends, stuff like that. But bioweapons you can already stop without using the flame mine. Like, you can save and you can save your friends from enemy grabs without using a flame mine. And uh, as for ivies, if you're playing in a team, which I'm assuming most people who are watching this could be, um, someone on the team will always have fire. And if not, it's just easy to get. I mean, I know I guess using a flame mine would be more useful for resources, but I mean, it's still in my opinion, not as useful as shock. It doesn't stun a group. It doesn't keep enemies stunned. But shock as well, if you stun a group and you have a down teammate in that group, you can literally pick up a revived teammate through shock while they're all shocked. Like, you have to, you have to time it out very well. If you, have, you really do because the shock doesn't last for too long. But if you do it right, I've done it before, you can pick up a revived teammate. Now, Sino Jammers. Probably the second best one in my opinion, although I don't really run it myself. Um, <clears throat> for me, it's not my playstyle. Maybe I feel like it's more useful for teams. If you are in a like four grouped team, then in that case, I would say that it is useful. But even then, I still run shock when I'm in a team myself. Um, it's never really like. I guess, I don't know. I feel like the only way you can really make this work is if you're speedrun Martin and you can get ahead of the team. It really only like helps with ambush and stuff like that. I, I would, in my opinion, trap Alex maybe. I don't know, I, maybe I haven't ran it enough myself to really give the full thing, but 
I don't know. Signal jammers, it does keep a mastermind from spawning stuff, but they could still spawn in a different part of the area. So it's not like I would say. And if they do spawn something else, they could spawn in that enemy and still get you from like another side. So I don't know. I feel like for the most part, signal jammers are more useful in teams. So if you want to run signal jammers in general, you can. If you want to run flame, you can, of course. That's all great. But signal jammers are more useful for teams. Flame for me has the less or the least impact and shock for me is more beneficial because it helps crowd control. Um, life hacks, we'll move on to this one. <clears throat> Flash thing, obviously. Uh, no really doubt about it, but it is really good. It cancels out four creature buffs when you use a flash grenade or flash baton. I feel like I don't really need to explain this too much because, you know, if you've been playing this game for a while, you know flashy thing is pretty good. Um, bulletproof. Oh god, you know, I would totally run this more <laughs> if I knew I was going against a Niglai and I just knew deep down I was going to. Definitely would switch to this. But not as beneficial for the team, mostly for yourself. It's mostly beneficial beneficial for yourself. I feel like the best builds help everybody in your team, which would be flashy things. Bulletproof only helps you, really. Gas mask, same thing. Works really well to keep you away from infection, but only helps you. Does not help the whole team. Reinforce, this is really good. If flashy thing did not exist, I would probably be running reinforce because you could do a lot of decent damage with Martin and not only does it increase crits, but it also helps with melee weapons. But just because it helps with melee weapons doesn't mean that the crits aren't guaranteed. If you run guns on Martin, you also get an increased hit chance with reinforce on. So if, like I said, if flash thing didn't exist, I would definitely be running reinforce. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could run whatever you want, of course. Do your own thing. But um, Flash thing, definitely the best one. Helps the whole team. And if you help the whole team, you have a higher advantage because you're making it easier for everyone, not just yourself. So that's, that's that. Sapper, we'll go to switch this one. My best Martin, I feel like. I feel like my Martin does the best when he's switching mines out and making his own. And the reason why that is, is because if you're going against creatures and stuff like that, which, you know, is usually what's going on, the more mines that you have around the map, for me, the better. That's Martin's whole, like, shtick, you know? The more mines he can have, the more flashes he can have, the more useful he is. And I know that Switcheroo has its a longer takedown, like he doesn't... I guess take out traps as fast as he would with like nimble maybe or anything else but it really does not take long as long as you can time it out correctly you will always get that mine done so like i said if you want to run this obviously it's great i feel like like i said the more mines the better so this one is definitely the number one for me nimble <clears throat> and also well switcheroo helps the whole team like i said the whole point is to help the whole team so this one will definitely help out the whole team. The more traps you have, especially with Shock, you're helping out the whole team by keeping the crowd controlled and you're giving your team the advantage to do what they gotta do. You can, with Shock, you can run around the zombies, you can take them out, you can heal a friend, you can do a terminal, I've done that before, you can do a lot. So, and if you have more mines around that area, the better. The more everything will just keep getting stunned and the mastermind just will almost have nothing they can really do, at least with those shocked zombies. So yeah, nimble, useful, but not as beneficial as Switcheroo in my opinion. You take out traps faster, great, but uh, there's not really much to say about that one for me. Now Minesweeper, traps will not trigger even when running. You can run this if you're, I guess, a speed run Martin, it would help a lot, but this one is, to me, not really useful either because martin already naturally walks over traps without triggering them he's the only character that can do that he's um he's just unique like that <laughs> he's just a unique guy and um yeah you can walk over traps with martin without minesweeper and the trap won't go off so if you know that you're going like against a trap pile and you're in a team and you're like hold on guys let me get across this trap pile and take them all out 
uh, with my flash or shoot them out or anything. Like you could just walk over them without Minesweeper. So there's that little fun fact. Um, but you know, if you want to run in, feel free. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? I guess there's nothing else to say about it. But yeah, if something comes to mind again, I'll, I'll come back to it because I feel like I had something I wanted to say, but I forgot. EOD suit. Um, this one is interesting because it greatly reduces damage taken when disarming traps and placing mines, increases movement set for set duration afterwards, increases movement speed. Uh, honestly, it's really just not useful. I mean, it greatly reduces damage taken when disarming traps and placing mines, increases movement set. It's kind of like, <laughs> think of it as like January's pickpocket. Really, it's not that useful. And it's also not helping the team. I feel like the one that would help the team the most, and if you're helping the team, you're helping yourself, by the way, is Switcheroo. So Switcheroo, number one for me. And like I said, yeah, that's that. Equipment, well, this is my equipment now. It's not the build I usually run, but um, I will go over this build because I have it. I feel like my number one build would be the one that I show next after this. But my build right now, I call this sort of like, I guess, my solo queue build, although you could run it with the team. It's very useful. I've done it. Uh, yeah. Mixtape 3. Obviously, the more flashes you get, the better. Also, if you're shooting cameras and taking out zombies, your flash will come back faster. Your ult, no matter who you're playing, will come back faster. <clears throat> so as long as you're mixing mixtape 3, with taking out creatures and shooting cameras and stuff like that, the 150 seconds will not be 150 seconds. It'll be maybe like 120 or something like that. Um, FMJ3, obviously. You could do damage, you know, fend for yourself, help the team out, do all that. Not much to go over with that. Bulletproof S3. Martin has really low health, I've realized, and Bulletproof S3 helps him not be as much as a weenie, I guess you could say. Um, you know, self-explanatory, increases maximum health, and this is where it gets spicy. The supplements 3. Obviously, you need yellow herbs for this, and, uh, you know, when you have yellow herbs, it really helps a lot, because not only does yellow herbs increase your defense, it increases your offense, so... FMJ3 and Bulletproof SD will be complemented by the Supplements 3, so you will do more damage than you already do, and you will take less damage. Martin will not go down as easy, and he will be basically sort of a damage dealer. So, think of it all together. You're getting your flashback in 120 seconds. You're doing damage. You're not going down as easy, and you're mixing that all together with Supplements 3. You're doing a decent amount of damage, and Martin can take out a whole core, which I've done by myself with only like two and a half clips. Well, three and a half clips, maybe. So, you know, if it comes down to you having to take out a core, you can depend on yourself to do it because, you know, sometimes you're that only person that can do that in certain scenarios. Now, let's take all this away, and we'll do the other build I run, which should be Mixtape 2, FMJ 3. Uh, Bulletproof S3, and Book of Wisdom. So same thing, really. Uh, mixtape 2, you know, the only reason why it's Mixtape 2 is because you can't run Mixtape 3, unfortunately. But I guess if you combine Mixtape 2 with Book of Wisdom, which also slightly decreases the fever skill cooldown, it helps with the Mixtape 2. So I guess in a way, it's basically having Mixtape 3 on. So, but the reason why... I like Book of Wisdom on Martin is because the more you can put a mine around, the more, I, I don't want to say useful you are, but you know, you get your mind back faster and that's like, you know, like I said, Martin's whole shtick. He has a mind person, he flashes, so this is really mixing up his flash and mixing up his mind, basically mixing up what he does in general and you can get it done as fast as possible. It's really useful and it's really good, but like I said, there's not really much to go over here. I pretty feel like running this build is pretty self-explanatory, which is the one that I typically run. But um, yeah, like I said, if you want to run mixtape three, which I feel like some people might want to do, mixtape three, FMJ three, 
bulletproof vest three and supplements three you know same thing went over this all i guess there's really nothing else to go over so i hope that this video was useful to you guys if you watched it if you made it this far and if you did watch and make it this far feel free to comment and tell me like i guess what your martin build is or what you think is useful on him or what you think of the video if you found it useful it's really great and useful i would appreciate it a lot and even if you don't say anything i mean <laughs> you know that's fine i just i just want to help people out i guess you could say from a rank 800 perspective and i do want to get to 999 at some point so hopefully that is soon sooner rather than later but um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope you enjoyed the tips and tricks i guess <laughs> and uh until my next video i will see you guys so goodbye Zs.